Hello there, this is Dimitris Christou and it's been a while I've been having some issues with my personal computer I had to change both the uh, processor and the motherboard and this happened at about a month ago so it's been a while I'm pretty sorry for that but this time around we'll be seeing a little nice video tutorial about creating uh, some sort of fractals using Blender and I've been experimenting with fractals mainly using Mandelbulb 3D and it's been pretty interesting working with fractals I've been creating some nice uh, clips using Mandelbulb 3D and for this one as I said before we're going to try and build a structure uh, that will resemble and look like a fractal using Blender and fractal is actually the repetition of a pattern it's not going to be an exact fractal since it won't be uh, repeating itself indefinitely but it will look like one so let's begin we have the default key the default scene here and we have the default cube selected and what I'll do is move over to the modifiers panel click this little key to move to the modifiers and I'll click add modifier and add an array what I'll do now is hit shift A and add empty and plain axis what I'm going to do is change the name of the empty to 1 I'm double clicking the name of the empty to change the name okay now I'll hit 7 on my Mary keypad for the port of view and I'll hit G to grab the empty and move it you can see at the bottom left corner of the 3d view here I'm moving the empty uh, at minus 1.5 on the x-axis and at 0 0.5 on the y-axis and I'm placing the empty here and you can see that we if we had a cube that would be half the size of uh, this cube right here it would take this little place okay and that's why I'm positioning the empty here I'll also hit 3 and perhaps control 3 for the left orth view and I'll hit Z and Z to grab and move the empty on the Z axis and if I hit Z now you can see that I want the empty to be at the middle of this uh, of this part here of the cube and as I said before if you take a cube that would eat uh, would be the half of this one you'd have to position it at about here to be right okay I'm selecting the cube now we have the empty in place I'll uncheck the relative offset click object offset and as an object the uh, blender here waits for an object to use as the uh, offset for the RA modifier I'm going to clip to click one to select the empty called one we have the array here working we have the uh, second cube placed where the empty is what I'll do now is select the empty the uh, empty called one and I'll hit the S key to scale the empty down and I'll scale it down at 0 0.5 okay you can see at the bottom left corner the cube the empty actually scaling and as you can see we're having the uh, array here we have the original cube and we have the uh, second cube which is half the size of the original cube and that's why we've positioned the empty at about here so that we're having this one right here okay selecting the cube and we're at the modifiers and now as you can see if I increase the count we're having the cube here repeating and applied and as the empty gets uh, smaller it always uses the empty position and scaling the cube is positioned and scaled along the uh, x-axis following the empty all right let's do this once more I'll hit shift A and add empty and plain axis feel free to change the uh, empty uh, uh, the way the empty looks if you get complicated 
So we have the empty. Let's change the name. Double clicking the name to change it to two. Okay. I'll hit seven on my Mary keypad for the both of you. We have the empty selected. I'll hit the G key to grab and move it. And again, I'm positioning the empty at uh, about where I would, where I would position a cube. And let's hit one or perhaps control and one for the back ortho of you. And I'll hit Z and Z to grab the empty and move it on the Z axis. Okay. And minus 0 0.5 on the Z. Okay. Now I'm selecting the cube again. We have the empty positioned and we can also hit S to scale the empty down. Again, we will scale it down at 0 0.5. All right. Select the cube. And I'll add another array, click Add Modifier and add an array. You can see the array. We want to uncheck the relative offset and check the object offset and select the second empty, the one called 2. OK. So you can see, and this is pretty interesting, that the second array uses the entire first array to clone it and use it for the modifier. Now again, I'll increase the count. Two, three, four, five. Okay. And if you want to, I'm going to do this because I think it'll look better. I'm selecting the empty, the one called two. And I'm going to set the Y, let's set it from 1.5 to minus 1.5. So we'll bring it the empty that way. And of course, the array follows. OK. Let's do this once more, a final time. I'll hit Shift A and add empty. Let's add plain axis again. I'm going to call this empty 3. OK. I'll hit 1 on my memory keypad for the front author view. We have the empty selected. I'll hit the Z key to grab it, move it at 0 0.5 of the X axis and 1.5 on the Z axis. And I'll hit 7 for the top of view. And hit T and Y to grab and move the empty on Y axis for 0 0.5 units. OK. We have the empty in place. I'll also hit the S key to scale it down at 0 0.5 on every X. OK. Selecting the cubes again. And I'm going to add another array. Okay. Once more, uncheck the relative offset, check the object offset, and select the empty code 3. And you can see that, once more, the uh, third array uses the second and the first array to clone the uh, objects. I'll increase the count, let's set it to 5, and you can already see that we're getting some nice interesting pattern here and the repetition of the object looks a lot like a fractal but as i said before this is not an exact fractal because we're having geometry here we're having faces and vertices but it looks like one okay and now what i'm going to do is try to make this one look a bit more interesting and I'll add some modifiers and move them up at the modifier stack because uh, I wanted you to first see the uh, modifiers here working with simple cubes. But now let's try to make it look nicer. Okay, click add modifier and I'm going to add, let's add a remess modifier. And I'm going to bring the remess modifier up and up and up at the top of the modifier stack. And I'll set the octree depth from 4 to 3. And change the mode from sharp to locks. The reason I'm adding the remus modifier here is because I want the cube here to have some extra geometry. And you can see it if I hit the Z key while the cursor is over the 3D view to take a look in the wireframe mode. And you can see that now our cubes have some extra geometry created by the remus modifier. Okay. What I'll also do is click Add Modifier and let's hit Z to switch to Solid View. Click Add Modifier and I'm going to add a Build Modifier. Now we'll use the Build Modifier a few times before. And the Build Modifier builds the object in time 
it takes 100 frames to build the entire object and I'm going to move the build modifier up in the modifier stack and place it right below the ribbons modifier okay the start is set to 1 the length is set to 100 so I'm going to change the frame here from 1 let's change it to 60 okay looking good so we have an interesting construction here and that's why I've, uh, I'm adding the modifiers now I wanted you to see it uh, build with the empties and all while the object was a uh, plain simple cube because it would be hard to see me working with this uh, object as it is right now I'm going to add another modifier click add modifier and I'm going to add a solidify modifier I think the thickness is good at about 0.01 so I'm going to bring this solidify modifier up in the modifier stack want this one to be up okay and I'm bringing the solidify modifier right below the build modifier okay and this one looks pretty nice okay and this is it this is how our uh, little fractal test here looks I'm going to add a couple of more arrays click add modifier and an array and for this one I want to use an empty and of course as you can imagine you can use empties to move the, your fractal this way and the array modifier and for this one I'll just uh, leave it to the relative offset we have the relative offset of x to 1 and I want to create a nice looking interesting construction here I'll increase the count to 3 and let's add a final array and this one takes a while because we are increasing the scene geometry here a lot and I'll set the X relative offset to 0 and set the Y relative offset to 1 let's see how it looks okay and as you can see in a pretty little while we are having an interesting construction here you could use it for uh, a lot of reasons you can use it as a distant CD for your scenes it looks pretty nice but let's try to render an image to take a look I'm uh, picking some nice angle here okay we're good at about here and I'll hit Control alt and 0 on my keyboard to put the camera where I was looking before right mouse button click to select the camera and I'm selecting the camera frame here we have the location and the rotation for the camera I think we're good at about here I'm going to move my camera up a bit and move it at about here and let's move away let's set the X to minus 6 the Y to minus 4 okay and the Z to 2 and let's set the uh, Z rotation here to minus 60 and the uh, X rotation to 80 and now I'll move over to the camera options and change the focal length let's set it from 35 let's bring it down so we're having more of our scene in our in the frame let's set it to 25 okay now I'm selecting the lamp right mouse button click to select it I'm hitting 7 on my mirror keypad for top all of you hit Z to grab it move it at about here let's see okay and what I'll also do is move over to the world options and add some environment lightning the energy set to 1 the color of the environment lighting is set to white let's increase the samples a bit and let's take a look through the camera perspective here and I'm selecting the cube I'm going to add a simple material let's bring the specular intensity down I'll change the diffuse color let's set it to a nice little blue color and let's render an image to take a look now this will take some time and that's because we're using uh, 7 and 3200 thousand faces 
which is pretty much but uh, don't forget that we're having lots and lots of geometry here you can zoom in to those little places over here or over here and although you're having lots of geometry you're having some little nice detail going on here uh, just a couple more things before I uh, will wrap this up and I'm hitting the escape key to switch back to the 3D viewport now if you want to create an animation using this one and I'm guessing that you would love to move your camera through this little fractal-ish construction we have what you have to definitely do is uh, apply the build modifier and you have to apply the build modifier because the build modifier will uh, change as we move uh, over the frames and you can see I'm hitting the right arrow and perhaps it's wrong because we're having lots of, ge of geometry now if you keep the build modifier and you animate your scene the uh, build modifier will start with an empty scene at frame 1 and will start building your scene up to uh, frame 100 so if you want to animate this and keep it uh, as it is you have to apply the build modifier now this is it this is our little tutorial and this is uh, I believe some nice uh, experiments and we've built we've managed to build actually we have some pattern repetition here uh, and we've managed to build fractals using blender that's pretty interesting you can also use cycles to render it and I, I'll be posting some images and perhaps animation for you people to see this is it this is Dimitris Christou and thanks for watching